In a video a few months ago, I said I didn't like slice of life or romance anime, but as it turns out, I'm actually a big fat liar. Sasaki Tamiyano is a BL manga and anime series that focuses on, you guessed it, the relationship between high schoolers Sasaki and Miyano. When Sasaki saves Miyano's friend from a group of bullies, Miyano can't seem to shake off his very forward senpai, who makes it clear from the beginning that he's attracted to the younger lad. Caught up in admiration, the two begin spending more time together, though as it turns out, the shy Miyano harbours an embarrassing secret, that he's actually a fidanchi, a boy who likes boys love or yaoi manga. Set in an all boys school because it's a BL so of course it is, the last thing Miyano wants is for other students to find out what he's into. When he accidentally lets this slip to Sasaki however, Sasaki wants to find out the appeal and the two begin sharing an interest in BL, changing their relationship into something more. It's the stuff of dreams really, friends bonding over manga. So I started watching this because I saw a gif on Tumblr that I thought was something to do with Given because look, orange boy. But after doing a little research, I realised that this was something new. One thing I often do with anime is when I'm watching something a little darker or something edgier, I need a palate cleanser, something low calorie to stop me falling into a pit of despair. So for every episode of Devilman Crybaby or Berserk I might watch, I'll end my evening with something like the Ghost Stories dub or Kuroko's Basketball because we all need a break, right? And boy, this did not disappoint. It is one of the sweetest anime I've ever watched, topped only by Gaku and Babysitters because Kotaro is an angel and I need to protect him at all costs. When I go into a BL or any anime that has queer characters, I'm always a little bit apprehensive. As we've seen in the past, there are many negative and damaging tropes that come up in this genre, including topics such as abuse, non-consensual acts and violence. But from the few gifs I'd seen, I was under the impression that this might be a little different. And it was. Right off the bat, this anime is visually stunning. The colour palette is super soft and pretty, and in its more romantic moments, the lighting often shifts, and we get these cute flowers and shapes appearing on screen. In general, Studio Dean has nailed the animation here, and I love the character design. I love the whole colour palette, and all in all, it doesn't fall flat in any way. Ignoring the slightly off CGI that crops up here and there, it's honestly a stunning anime. The main focus of the series is of course the developing feelings and existing friendship between Sasaki and Miyano and how they both deal with their feelings towards each other. Miyano's feelings are often the most complex and the early episodes focus largely on the explorations of admiration that Miyano feels towards Sasaki. We see that Miyano has always looked up to him to some degree and we witness his confusion over whether this admiration is actually something more. Something I think is very common in the queer experience experience. Now I can't speak for others but developing that first crush on someone the same gender as you is kind of confusing. There's that feeling of do I have romantic feelings for this person or do I just want to be like them? And it's maybe something that's more common than I realise but it's something that I definitely noticed when I was finding myself and trying to figure it out. Of course we get some gay panic in there, Miano is pretty sure he likes girls and we see him questioning this, thinking things like well, I only ever liked a girl before, or I can't like him, he's a guy. Ah, the denial stage. But then, on the flip side of that, we get to witness Sasaki worrying about if Miyano even likes him at all. It does a really good job of not just summing up that first queer crush you might have, but also just having a crush in general, and all the questions that come with having a crush but not knowing how to act on it. When Sasaki actually does declare his feelings, in a move that no real life high schooler has ever done, Miyano doesn't give an answer right away. He gives himself time to question how he feels without shutting Sasaki down completely. This is important, not just in terms of exploring his sexuality, but also because he uses this time to explore their friendship and how things could change if they were to move into a romantic relationship. In real life, we sometimes get so caught up in our own romantic feelings that we forget there's a friendship on the other end of it, and we don't think about how that might change if a romantic relationship forms. 
It's never explicitly stated, but touching on themes of pansexuality and bisexuality is something I really enjoyed about Sasaki Tamiano, and it focuses largely on the idea of liking someone because you like who they are as a person. We get this episode where Miyano asks Sasaki why he likes him, who then responds by saying that he likes Miyano's face, sending Miyano into an insecure spiral, given that he was already insecure about his feminine features. Of course, there's more that Sasaki likes about Miyano than just his face, which he later admits, telling him effectively that he likes everything about him. He likes him for him and for who he is as a person. And I always really enjoy when media talks about love like this, when we look into the idea of love being more than just gender, because it's something that's ignored quite often, with characters getting put into boxes and bi and pansexuality just being completely ignored. This ties into the biggest theme of the show, which is asking what it is to love someone, what you would do for the people you love, and what it is to admit those feelings to yourself and to other people. There's times when Sasaki and Miyano really makes me miss having a crush. Not the messy, conflicting elements of it, but the innocence that comes with having a crush on someone at school and trying to figure out if they like you as much as you like them. Those times when you would go out of your way to be around them or to try and talk to them. It's one of those things that I don't really think happens very much these days and it made me oddly nostalgic. And the best part is, it's so unproblematic. We don't always get queer anime that's just pleasant to watch. It's one of the reasons I used to avoid more slice of life and romance, BL in particular, because it's often so angsty, over-sexualized, or features topics such as abuse, which I don't always want to see. Even Given, which I still think was fantastic, has some really odd moments that were kind of toxic, and I didn't need them to be there to tell the story they were going for. It's one reason I often bring up Yuri on Ice when talking about queer representation done well, because it's pretty wholesome and the relationship is well developed without there being power struggles or toxic tendencies, just a solid relationship with a nice ending. And while I think we're getting close, I'd love to see more queer anime like this. There are times during Sasaki Samiano where I did genuinely think it was about to veer off into creepy or weird territory. There's this one episode where Miyano is sick and he's sleeping on his desk while Sasaki is watching over him. Sasaki starts thinking back to a conversation they'd had earlier about characters from BL kissing through their masks, which I took to mean he was thinking about kissing him. But then just as it starts to get a little bit odd, he says to himself, nope, definitely not okay. And I was like, oh, thank God. Okay, good. No kissing people when they're passed out, please and thank you. Like, oh my God. Or in a later episode where Miyano is speaking to a girl he used to like, Sasaki loses control of his feelings, grabs Miyano and drags him away from the girl. And I was thinking, oh no. It's, here we go, he's getting possessive. But then it was addressed pretty much right away and he apologises, telling Miyano that he felt jealous before clarifying that he didn't want to be rough with the people he liked. And I'm like, oh, okay, right. The meta jokes are also brilliant. The comments about Tasuku's girlfriend being a Funjoshi when they know damn well that half the audience are also Funjoshi is very fun and self-aware, as are many of the comments made by Miyano about the BL he's reading. Throughout the series, you get explanations of what a semi and a uke are, and they actually break down a lot of BL tropes, even talking about them before they're relived in their own way. Sasaki Tamiyano holds a mirror up to the BL genre, and in doing so manages to avoid many of the common negative tropes, instead taking the ones that are often played for laughs, and using them to highlight how it feels to figure yourself out both individually and as a couple, in a rather sincere way. My notes here just say, it's so pretty, even if it does make me feel lonely. The supporting cast are also brilliant. I was surprised at how much I enjoyed seeing them interact with each other, and I ended up being really curious about their lives, particularly Hirano. There are times as well where this anime is oddly relatable. It definitely gave me horrible flashbacks to the time I once met someone rather cute while I was drunk, and instead of being cool, calm and collected, I just started talking about anime. Embarrassing. 
Miano spends a lot of time worried about not being viewed as masculine, leading to some really interesting discourse. He's incredibly self-aware of his appearance and desperately wants people to stop thinking that he looks feminine. This is a worry that he brings into his relationship with Sasaki and leads him to interrogate his love of BL and the often fetishized tropes we see in the genre, thinking about how these tropes can actually impact your own self-image. Coming back around to the comment about Sasaki liking his face, coupled with Miyano's insecurity, he begins to wonder what will happen to them if Miyano gets taller or if he becomes more traditionally masculine, which is something I think we can all relate to. Having those feelings of, will this person still like me when I'm old? Or would this person still love me if I got fat? All of those scenarios we play in our head that tie to our own insecurities. Watching it as a single person was weird. So about halfway through watching this, I had a mild, unrelated breakdown about the hideous reality that I'm nearly 30 single and never go outside, which along with the fact everyone I know seems to be having children sent me west for a little while. But then I got over that, I grew some balls and I finally finished watching. At times the show is frustrating because it's fairly obvious to everyone except Miano that he does like Sasaki, but we still have to sit through a lot of the build up to get to a very sweet confession. I understand that is the point though, to explore those feelings and yourself before being comfortable enough to admit it to others, but man, it feels like it takes forever. I couldn't help but compare this to the last BL I watched, which was The Night Beyond the Tricornered Window. It's a show that I really enjoyed, even if it was a little rushed and it fell flat at the end. The anime itself is pretty tame compared to the manga, but even then the relationship between Hiyakawa and Mikado comes across as toxic at times and is underdeveloped. Whereas Sasaki to Miyano showcases the wholesome side of BL, along with an incredibly well-developed relationship that we see grow throughout the series. So is this the perfect queer anime? Or at least the perfect BL? Well, for me personally, not exactly, but we are close. Personally, I like my queer anime to have a little bit more substance than just being queer and in love, but this is a BL, so that's kind of the point. It's vanilla, which I know isn't for everyone, but that's also where it thrives. Everyone is super chill with each other, there's no abuse, no non-consensual acts, no sexual stuff at all actually, no violence, no manipulation, no terrible, awful tropes like the ones we've witnessed over the years. It's just a nice story about two guys who quite like BL and quite like each other. And isn't a nice story like that just what we need in the world right now?